Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Shoe Sports Report. That's Frank Dezenzo. I'm Taylor Krimmel. And Frank, what a weekend for the Pioneers. Eight out of ten teams won. The women's track and field team won their third straight NEC championship. But let's start off with women's basketball. Let's get right into it, Taylor. Picking up a win over Fairleigh Dickinson on Saturday and a huge win over Bryant on Monday, the Sacred Heart women's basketball team clinched a share of the Northeast Conference regular season title for the fifth time in program history. On Saturday, the team started off the, the weekend putting its sixth straight W in the win column as they defeated FDU 80-65. to Five Pioneers reached double-digit scoring with Hannah Kimmel leading the way with 16. Sacred Heart was down 14 to 11 entering the second quarter. They then went 10 of 15 in the quarter, shooting a fantastic 66% from the field. The lead saw its fair share of changes throughout the first half, but the Pioneers got hot nearing the end of the half. Going on a nine point run, this took them to an eight point lead over FDU, 34 to 26, and Sacred Heart never looked back. On Monday, the Pioneers traveled to Smithfield, Rhode Island for an epic 1-vs-2 NEC matchup. After falling to the Bulldogs by just two points earlier in the season, Shue was looking for a win to clinch a share of the Northeast Conference regular season title. Top team in the league, Sacred Heart, defeated number 2 Bryant in a thrilling 64-60 game. We're going to start this off in the first, first bucket of the game. Ivory Bailey kicks it off with the drive to the basket. Now we have Hannah Kimmel here, who's going to steal and go straight to the rack for two. Sacred Heart up early. Kelsey Castro here from downtown. There's a three. Straight to the third. We're going to find Castro with a driving dish to Adacia Williams. There's two. Tarsi here, great bounce pass to Hickey for a great lay-in. Great passing from Sacred Heart here. Yes, definitely. And there is Castro once again from downtown. Kimmel here for three. She's always catching fire. Here's Williams now, 4-3, up and in. Sacred Heart made seven threes in this game. Fantastic shooting by the, the Pioneers. Straight to the basket here for Castro. Kimmel, yet another three, drops that one. That's three of her 22 on the day. And here, Castro is going to get the N1, and this game is going to end 64 to 60. Averaging 19 points and 7 rebounds per game this weekend, Kimmel was named the Choice Hotel's NEC Player of the Week for the second time in three weeks. The, the women will be home for the last time during the regular season on Saturday to take on the Red Flash from St. Francis University. The game will tip off at 1.05 after the Senior Day Ceremony, which will honor the three graduating seniors. Alyssa Tarsi, Larea Etienne, and Joanna Lopez are celebrated. As good of a weekend that our women's basketball team had, the women's indoor track and field team had an even better one down on Staten Island. Adam, why don't you tell us all about the Pioneers three-peat? That's right, Taylor. It was a great week on Staten Island. Women's track and field won its third straight NEC championship, edging LIU Brooklyn for a third straight year by a score of 150 to 143. With a six point lead heading into the final two events on the championships, the distance medley team of Tara Conley, Kelly Quinn, Elizabeth Quine, and Nicole Cody came through with a silver medal, essentially clinching the title. Alexandra Kaislin and Shannon Hickey each took home two medals at the event. Kaislin finished second in the 3,000 meters and the 5,000 meters, while fellow senior captain Hickey placed third in the 3,000 meters and got the gold in the 5,000 meters. It marked the fourth consecutive year that the Pioneers went one and two in the 5,000 meters as Sacred Heart earned 27 points in the event. Nicole Bartosh claimed bronze in the long jump and had three other fourth place finishes as to lead the Pioneers with 21 points. Jennifer Hain was right behind her with 18, including a silver medal in the mile. Also winning a medal for the shoe for shoe was Selena Shampiri, who took home a bronze in the pole vault, while Kayla Lawrence and Taylor Ann D'Agostino were second and third in the 500 meters. Select members of the Sacred Heart track and field team will continue their indoor season at the New England Track and Field Championships next weekend. Men's track finished third at the 2016 Northeast Conference 
Indoor Track and Field Championships behind Sean Ferguson, who became the third pioneer ever to be named Most Outstanding Performer. On the opening day of the championships, Ferguson won his second career 3,000 meter title by seven seconds after missing the championships last year. On day two, Ferguson became the first pioneer ever to complete the 3,000 meter and 5,000 meter double while also grabbing silver in the mile. Trevor Guerrera took home bronze medals in the mile, the 800 meters, and as a part of the four by 400 meter relay team, which included Sebastian Pierre, Brandon Tuomasi Ancra, and Ralph Ganji. David Roy IV, Giuseppe De Lucia, and Stephen Lefebvre all won bronze medals. That's all we have from track and field. Back to y'all at the desk. Thanks, Adam. It's terrific what the team has been able to do the last few years, and we wish them luck at the New England Championship. Now, turning to the ice, where the men's ice hockey team also had quite the weekend. After a tough, winless stretch, the Pioneers had a strong bounce-back weekend up in Buffalo against conference foe Canisius. When the teams played earlier in the year, it was a lopsided affair in both games. This weekend, not so much. On Friday night, Canisius opened the scoring in the first period, but Sacred Heart answered with two goals of their own. Zach DeConsolese evened things up with a power play goal, and then Zach Luchik scored the go-ahead. The Pioneers got another power play goal in the third period, this time from Evan Jasper. And finally, Jordan Manello put the first game on ice with an unassisted goal. Sacred Heart wins 4-3. Now on to Saturday night's game. Tell me if this sounds familiar. Kanisha scores first. Sacred Heart goes on to win 4-3. That's exactly what happened. This time, the Pioneers scored four straight goals. First, Evan Jasper tied things up midway through the first period. Then, Shu dominated the second period. Justin Danforth gave the Pioneers the lead. Evan Jasper had a fantastic breakaway goal. Adam Durkee scored the final goal for Sacred Heart all in the second period. The final two minutes saw the Golden Griffins give it their all, scoring twice, but Sacred Heart held on to win, 4-3. The Pioneers host Holy Cross Friday night at 7.05 in the Milford Ice Pavilion in their final home game of the season. Prior to the game, the team is celebrating its four graduating seniors. The men's lacrosse team checked off a win in their home opener against Dartmouth on Saturday. After trailing by two in the fourth quarter, the Pioneers went on a surging 5-1 to one run to win the game 10-8. Both Alec Dodge and Alec, Alex Dosses netted a hat trick on the day. Brian Massey dished out three assists for a new career high. And Mike Calvigny held his own in on the faceoffs as he won 18-21, of 21, including 13-14 of 14 in the second half. The standout defensemen were Owen Thompson, who caused three turnovers, and Chase Goodfrey, who scooped up four ground balls. The Pioneers' huge defensive stand at the end of the game helped lift them over the Big Green, who, held, who were held scoreless for almost a full 10 minutes. Now we're, going back to send, now we're going to send it back to Adam, who has more for us in the update corner. The SHU men's volleyball team moved to 3-1 in Eastern Intercollegiate Volleyball Association after a weekend sweep at Charleston, West Virginia. On Friday, Michael Commons and Austin Arcala combined to match the entire Golden Eagles team with 31 kills. The Pioneers' defense limited Charleston to hitting just .020 and finished the match with eight total blocks on the way to a 3-1 win. Saturday, the Pioneers' defense held the Golden Eagles to hitting just .035, while Chris DeLucy provided 10 kills en route to a 3-0 win. Volleyball heads back on the road when they take on Princeton on Friday. The Sacred Heart women's lacrosse team captured its first win of this 2016 season on Saturday, defeating Holy Cross 14-10. Jenna Liljeburg led the offense with four goals, while Caitlin Delaney and Kylie Calandra both had a hat trick and assists down 4-3. Shu went on a 5-0 run and would eventually take a 10-6 halftime lead. Holy Cross got it close to 11-9 in the second half, but the Pioneers would put the Crusaders away with three of the final four goals. Shu closes their season opening three-game road swing on Thursday, February 25th at Iona. The wrestling team suffered a tough 19-17 dual match loss at Franklin and Marshall Saturday night. After losing the first three matches of the day, Shu started the comeback with three straight wins from Brandon Levesque, Jordan Velez, and Matt Fisher. It all came down to the last match of the night, 
but Duke Sherwood fell 3 to 1 by sudden victory after forcing overtime in the heavyweight match. The Pioneers' next stop is the EIWA Championships on March 4th at Princeton University. Men's and women's fencing both went 2 to 3 at the Philadelphia Invitational at the University of Pennsylvania. Freshman Apiste Romain Cannon was the bright spot on Sunday for the men with a 9-2 record, while Alex Harwood and Tyler Indy also had a strong showing in foil. For the women, it was junior team captain Julia Green who led the way at 11-4. CJ McCarter and Bailey Partridge were 9-6 in foil, and Mia Volpe finished 8-3 in Epi. Both squads will head to Vassar College on March 13th for the Northeast Regional Round of the NCAA Championship. The Sacred Heart women's tennis team won its second consecutive match on Saturday evening, sweeping Hartford 7-0 at Yale. The Pioneers were one doubles match shy of winning all 10 en route to improving to 3-4. Shu did not drop a set in singles play, including Maria Wardress picking up her first career win as a Pioneer with a 6-1, 6-2 decision. At sixth singles, Katie Dorenzo, Katie Dorenzo won her third straight match by defeating her opponent 6-3 and 6-1 at first singles for her team best eighth victory of the season. Olivia Podoberski joins her as the only Pioneers over 500 as she is now 5-4 after sweeping her opponent 6-4 and 6-0 at third singles. Also picking up wins were Paige Olson, Taylor Guarda, and uh, Claudia Ruiz. Shu takes next week off before taking its spring break trip to Puerto Rico, where it will play, where it will begin play with Valparaiso on March 6th. On the men's side, the Pioneers fell back to four and four on the year after they were swept by Marist four to nothing on Friday afternoon at Army of West Point. Brian Powers combined seven match winning streak between singles and doubles came to an end, along with Corey Seltman's four-game winning streak in singles. Trouble at West Point continued on Saturday when Sacred Heart was swept by the Black Knights 5 to nothing to drop under 500 on the season. Matt Pelotti and Corey Seltman came closest to picking up a point in doubles play, but ultimately lost the match 7 to 5 as Shu Shu will take the court again on Saturday in a matchup with Dartmouth and Hanover. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Adam. Sacred Heart looked to complete the regular season sweep against Bryant after beating the Bulldogs earlier thanks to Kane Broom's go-ahead three-pointer. The team is coming off a big win at home over CCSU. Let's see if they could keep the momentum going against Bryant. Start things off late in the first quarter. Kane Broom with a nice little finish there. Sacred Heart down by one. Now second half. McKnight is going to get the steal, and he's going to find Sean Hohen for the wide-open, easy layup. 15-49. Broom, he's going to get his way into the hole. Off glass. Sacred Heart up by 13. Then, 8.38 to go. Second half. Allen to foul zone. Nice pass. Nice finish. Sacred Heart up by 9. Then, about 7 minutes left in the game. Kane Broom takes it to the hole and one. He would complete it. This guy's an emphatic scorer. Great game for Kane Broom, and Sacred Heart is going to go on to win this one, 74 to 57. And the Pioneers continued their weekend road trip to Fairleigh Dickinson and looked to pay the Knights back for an 80 to 68 loss at home early in January. After two big wins back to back, let's check out the Pioneers' final ro road game of the regular season. Sacred Heart, 9-6 and six in the NEC, and here we have foul zone to Jordan Allen, who's going to do a nice little post move there and get the first bucket of the game. McKnight with a steal here and slams it down with authority. What a slam on the breakaway. Allen going to pay foul zone back here. Nice cut into the post, dunks that one home. Then I'm seeing double because Quincy McKnight's going to get another steal, drive into the paint, off glass, Great finish. finish. Great finish, and now... The Kane Broom Show, a layup for Kane. Then, three-pointer, stopping on a dime, nailing the triple. Then, Kane, off the right side, he's going to find Allen. And look at this emphatic dunk by Allen. Yeah, Sacred Heart on the comeback trail. 
down seven. Kane Broom, another three. What can't he do? And then Kane Broom, he's going to find Chris Robinson. Look at this finish. Up and under. Great layup there. Off glass. Then Kane Broom, here is your dagger. Off glass. Sacred Heart wins 91-86. 39 points for Kane Broom in that game. The Pioneers host Robert Morris Thursday night at the William H. Pitt Center in a crucial battle for NEC tournament seating. Tip-off is at 7 p.m. For more on the men's team, we welcome head coach Anthony Latina, who is sitting down with Aaron Burrell. Gentlemen, the floor is yours. Thanks, Frank, and uh, thank you, Coach, for joining us today. So you guys are on quite a run right now. You've won six out of your last seven. You are only a game out of first, and this is your final weekend of the season. It's finally upon us. So can you tell us a little bit about how you know, your team is coming together uh, and how you guys are preparing for this final weekend since you become, began conference play? Well, it's great to be here. Yeah, you know, we're real pleased with our progress. Um, you know, I think the simple answer is we've, we've had better performances, but I think it's bigger than that. I, I think our, our team chemistry and our togetherness uh, has really, really um, kind of peaked at the right time. And I think the other thing, too, is we got healthy. You know, we have all our guys, so now we're practicing together. We're, we're learning to play together. And, uh, again, it, it does help that we're getting terrific performances out of a lot of different guys. Now, you know, Kane Broom being most obvious because he's, you know, uh, been player of the week and Quincy McKnight and a rookie of the week. But our, you know, seniors uh, – you know, especially Tevin and, and Falzone and Jordan Allen have really given us great leadership. I think Tevin has been uh, a great presence on both ends, rebounding, blocking shots, uh, but also being an inside presence. And I think Jordan has uh, really helped our team chemistry with his, his passing and his unselfishness. So we have gotten contributions from a lot of different people in a lot of different games, and that's what it takes to, to have some success. So we're real pleased with the way we're playing, and hopefully we can continue it for a couple more weeks. Speaking of Kane Broom, uh, he's currently Metropolitan and NEC Player of the Week. Uh, he recently put up 39 against FDU. Uh, he's having an absolutely incredible season. He's leading the league in scoring. He's actually 10th in the nation, with o averaging over 22 points per game. Uh, could you tell us a little bit, uh, a bit about how? His, can you make his case for Postseason Player of the Year? Well, you know, Kane is uh, is obviously uh, having a tremendous season, and you know, when you evaluate players, there's, there's three different levels. You, you, there's some Basic statistics, like you said, 24 points a game. I, I think he's tied for eighth. I, I keep trying to tell, tell our sports information, he's, he's tied for eighth, so we want to move him up. So he's in the top ten, eighth, ninth, and tenth. But, uh, you know, he passes the statistics test in terms of points, rebounds, all those steals, all those kind of things. Uh, analytics is a real popular. Now he passes the analytics test. He leads the league in most analytics categories. And then he passes the eye test. And, and the last but not least, as far as being a player the type guy is, He's helping his team win. He's leading us to – he's making other people, people better. So um, I'm not one to lobby for players, but I can't imagine that anybody will vote for anyone else other than Kane for player of the year. He's just been that, that good and that special in the league, and I think he's earned, earned that opportunity. So we're very fortunate to have him. You know, here's another interesting thing that I, I don't think people realize is, you know, we have a player of the year, but we also have a most improved player. I, I would make an argument that he could be most improved player in the league. He wasn't on the first, second, or third team last year which of course was debatable, but he goes from that to being the best player in the league. I, I think that's quite an improvement, so that's a, a credit to his hard work and his improvement, and that's key for any player, but certainly in our program. Let's talk about another member of your backcourt who could end up with some uh, postseason hard work, Quincy McKnight. Uh, he's averaging over 11 points per game, which uh, actually puts him second amongst freshman scores in the NEC. Uh, he's also taken home a league-best five NEC Rookie of the Week awards. Uh, can you describe what makes him such an important presence in your squad? Well, his versatility, he can do a lot of different things. He's, he's not, you know, as dynamic a score as Kane, but he, he defends well. He re rebounds terrifically. He's one of the best rebounding guards in the league. Um, he gets steals. Uh, he, he's unselfish. So the thing that really makes Quincy unique is his just great versatility, and he can help you win in a lot of different ways. And, again, you know, I think it's, he's a winning player, you know, and, and I think that's what differentiates uh, – maybe being player of the year or rookie of the year from not. So hopefully he can help us in two more games. But I, I think uh, that's what makes him special is he helps the team in a lot of ways, but he does not he does it in a way that doesn't disrupt chemistry in any way. So we're thrilled to have him. We're you know, really hoping that he can have a strong last weekend for not only for himself but for the team. And I think he's, he's right there in a very good position to be rookie of the year. So we're, you know, we're excited about this weekend, but we're excited about our young backcourt for the future as well. And speaking of this weekend, uh, Saturday is Senior Day. Uh, you guys are going to honor Jordan, Jordan Allen, 
Tevin Falzone and Mofi Adekugo uh, before the finale. What has this group meant for the program, and what do you think they'll be remembered for? Well, I, I think what I hope they're remembered for most is doing something that no other team has ever done is winning a conference championship, regular season in a conference tournament. So I hope that's what they're remembered for. Uh, first and foremost, which means good things have happened to us. But I just I think they should be remembered for being good good people, uh, serious student athletes who represent our program and our university in a positive way. Tevin and Jordan and Mofi are very well liked on campus and they're well liked not only because they're good they're nice people and they have good personalities, but they they do things the right way. They're well liked by professors, uh, they're well liked on campus by administrators and, and I think that is something that I hope all of our players are looked at, how all of our players are looked at. And they've really represented our program. And, and again, lastly, I hope they're remembered as winners. You know, and you know, you're always remembered for how you ended. And they are ending on a very high note. You know, obviously, Tevin has played fantastically. I think you can make an argument that he could be on one of the all-league teams. And Jordan might not be, but he's also an extremely versatile player who has sacrificed his game in a lot of ways for the team. And, uh, and then Mofi's a guy who uh, had some ups and downs in terms of playing time throughout his career, but really has earned an opportunity to be an important part of our rotation and someone who's helped us win a couple games. And I think he could be a, you know, someone who could be an X factor in some of these games down the stretch. So very happy for all three of them. I'm happy that they're ending their career on a high note. And uh, the fact that they're great people makes it even that more satisfying for, for me as a coach and mm -hmm. as someone who, uh, runs our program. It's an exciting time for Pioneer basketball. Be sure to come out on Thursday and Saturday to check out two of the hottest teams in the league. That's all the time we have this week on the Shoe Sports Report. For Adam, Taylor, and Frank, I'm Aaron Burrell. We'll see you next week to recap the final weekend of the regular season and everything else in shoe athletics.